Have you encountered this when you were using XLOOKUP looking for a number and that number did appear to be within the range you were looking within? Somehow XLOOKUP couldn't find a match. If that's the case, in this video you are going to learn a process to identify the cause and also learn an effective solution to solve that. This is the 12th video in the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, you may want to go back to start from the beginning, this way you will have better understanding of this lesson. You can download the training Excel file from the link in the description below so you can practice online. Now let's dive into it. If you are practice online with a download Excel file, this file we're using is Super Excel 12 XLOOKUP text as numbers. Here I have three custom ID number. I wish to find the city name of those custom ID. And I have a list of custom ID on the left side in column A, which includes all those three custom IDs. So that means I can do a simple X lookup over here to look for the custom ID within the column A over here and then return the cities, then that will do the job. Actually, this is a little bit different. But first, let's try to do a regular X lookup, which you are now familiar with. So in the cell K11, I'm going to do equal sign XL tab key to insert the function. I will use my left arrow key to go to the cell F11. That's what we're looking for. Comma, looking for that from where? From the left side in column A. Let me go to the left side with left arrow key. From A11, control, shift arrow down, F4, mix absolute, then comma. The third argument will be the range you want to return the corresponding value. In our case, it will be those cities in column B. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column B from B11, control, shift, arrow down, F4 to make it absolute. So now I have my three arguments of the XLOOKUP, and for this particular purpose, we do not need to have the other three arguments. I'm going to omit the fourth, fifth, and sixth arguments. Now I will close with a bracket and enter, I'm getting an A. You understand, when we do XLOOKUP function without the fourth argument, that means when that first argument value is not being matched in the second argument range, then it's going to return an A. But we can see clearly this 1404 is in column A over here. How come this XLOOKUP tells us it's not being found, it's not being matched? Actually, if I copy the formula down for the other two custom ID, they also get an A. If you look at this custom ID 11869, it's clearly here, and this 11344 is also here too. How come all those three X lookup says it's not being matched? Now, to prove the point, let's do a very simple formula to compare this cell F11 with that cell A11. In our eye, those two look the same, they should be matching. Now, let's do this formula over here, equal sign. I take the cell F11, then equal to the cell A11. So, if those two cells are the same, this formula will give me true. If they're not the same, then this formula will give us false. Let me enter, that give me false. That means this cell F11 is not really the same as the cell A11 over here. And the same is true for the 11869 versus that one and 11344 versus this one over here. They are not the same. Now, what's the difference? One may see a little bit difference in terms of the format. Like this over here, the number 1404 is aligned to the left side versus this one over here, 1404 is aligned to the right. By default, if you type a number like the number over here, they will be aligned to the right side. And if you type with text, and text will align to the left side by default. So now that may give a little bit hint, meaning those may not be numbers. They might be text, but that don't truly tell you what they are because I could select those three cells over here, go to Home tab, use the alignment, I can align them to the right. So now from alignment perspective, those three cells over here, they are the same as those cosmetics over here too. But those are still different, they're not the same thing. 
because the alignment is just a format, you can change the format, but inherently the two cells are different. Now we know they're different, but what is the difference? That could be a simple way to tell what the difference is. If I select those numbers over here, you can see from the bottom right corner over here, we have average, we have count, we have sum. When you have a number, you are able to sum an average of numbers. Now, if I select those three cells over here, you see, I don't have the sum or average anymore. I have only count. This is an indication those three cells are not numbers. Those are text. If they're text, you couldn't sum or average text. Now, that's not really the most accurate way to tell what a cell is. The better way to tell what the cell is to use two functions. A function could be equal sign is number. This function has only one argument. It evaluates one value to tell you if that value is a number. If I do is number function against the cell f11 and then close in bracket. So if that is a number, this formula will give you true. If it's not a number, it will give you false. Now, if I enter, I get a false. That means this cell f11 is not a number. Then I can also do another function, which is is text. Equal sign is text. Also, this function has one argument. It assess this one value is a text or not. If it's a text, it will give you true. If it's not text, we'll give it false. Now, if I use this is text function to assess the cell F11 and then colon bracket and enter, you see we're getting true. That means the cell F11 is text. Now, if we check the cell A11, let's look at what that cell is. If I do a formula equal sign is number against the cell A11 colon bracket and enter, you see that is true. That means the cell A11 is a number, but this cell F11, that is a text. So that's why those two cells do not match. They're not the same. This cell A11 is a number cell. This cell F11 is a text cell. So that's why our XLOOKUP couldn't find a match because those two cells are different. Here, even though those two cells are not the same, but in reality, those are the same cosm ID. It's just this table may come from one system and that table may come from a different system. That's why one have the customer number as text, or other have the customer number as number. So I do wish my X lookup over here to match this 1404 with the other 1404 over here because they are actually the same customer ID. Now, there are different approaches to handle this. The first approach could be somehow changing those three cells from tax cell to number cell so they can match the number over there. The second approach could be changing those number cell in column A from number to tax so they can match it with the tax in column F over here. But I would say none of those two are good options. The best way is to not change the actual data here or the data over there. It's better to change in our process in the formula over here Somehow, we want to make this first argument still be in this one for the four, but as a number, so that can match the number in the cell A11. Because if you actually change the data over here or over there, and you may have other formula to be done later down the road, and they refer to the cell over there, over there, if the value are being changed, then you will generate actually more problems. So the best practice is don't change the actual data here or there, but change in your process, in your formula. Now, the way to handle this is to use a function called value. The value function has only one argument. If I type equal sign v a and tap it into the function, the value function has only one argument. It's converting a number stored as text back to number. So if I do value function against the cell F11, we'll understand F11 is a text cell, but has a number in it. So this value function can turn that text cell F11 as a number, but still with same value in it. So let me close the bracket and enter. That still gives me this one for the four, but the result from that value function will turn that from text number. 
if I now do a is number function equal sign is number against this cell h7, which is the one we just did the value function, and enter, you see that become true. That means this cell is a number. But the f11, if you look at this formula here, is a text. So that means we do not have to change the data over here from text number. Instead, we can change in our xlookup function. In the first argument, we do not wish to look for f11 because f11 is a text cell couldn't match with that number cell over here. We wish the first argument still be in this value 1, 4, 0, 4, but as a number. That can be done by the value function. So here within the first argument of the xlookup, I'm going to add this value function against that f11. Now, we're not looking for f11 anymore because f11 is a text, but now we're looking for value f11. As we saw earlier over here, when you do value f11, the result of that function is to return that 14004 as a number. So as a number, this can match with that number 1404 over here. Now if I enter, you see we found the match and return city being a mirror. If I copy the formula down for the other two, then both find the match and give me the corresponding cities. So that's approach to handle this. When you have number stored in a text cell, you don't change the data over here, don't change data over there. Instead, you change in your formula. You make your first argument not being that original f11, but being f11 as number. And you can do that by using value function against that cell f11, which turns that f11 cell content into number, if that cell has number in it. If you find this lesson beneficial, please give this video a thumb up and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. If you have any questions, please write comment below and I will answer questions. In the next video of the XLOOKUP Inside Out series, you are going to learn how to handle the opposite scenario where you need to turn a number into text within the XLOOKUP function. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you.